Hello everyone, this is Ben Lane, and this week I'm going to answer a very simple yet complex question. Can you test ammonia with strips and actually trust it? Let's talk about that. Let me explain some context as to why I have four different suppliers of test strips in my hand and API liquid ammonia kits over there. <laughs> I went, I went a little wild. Went a little wild. But here's the thing. In doing some of my starting testing, down here on the anoxic system, I noticed a problem. The ammonia test strips I had didn't seem to be reading when I know that I had added enough ammonia chloride to put it to at least four to five parts per million. I had to do some kind of weird math and in the end it probably put it closer to six parts per million, but that should have been read by my test. So I did the first thing you could think of. I went and bought some fresh aquarium co-op ammonia test strips. They're local, they're easy, it was the fastest way, and I didn't necessarily want to go all the way to the full-on API master test kit yet. Didn't seem to be reading to what I thought my ammonia level should be in my tank based on the ammonium chloride I had added. Some research. Now let's talk about that research. There is a really, really lengthy and great thread on the Aquarium Co-op forum that you should read. I'm going to link it down in the description below because this person put in some very significant testing. And as part of why I decided I wanted to try a number of different test strips outside of the aquarium co-ops to see is this a prevalent problem in a lot of test strips or just a few. And then how does that compare to liquid test case uh, from like API? So we know these bottles here, right? This is number two, we have got both, but these get bad boys. So here's what I found first. There's an important thing to note that some testing mediums are testing specifically unionized or free ammonia, and that's what we know as NH3. There is also ionized or total ammonia nitrate is a testing, which will is what the API test kits include. That includes NH4 plus, so NH3 and NH4 plus, ammonia and ammonium. Very important. Now, why does this matter? Bentley, what's the point? Are you gonna dunk on another product? No, 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 no. What matters is whether or not we can trust the testing we're doing with these is understanding what they're reading in the first place. And this is where the user on the Aquarium Co-op thread really explains this very, very well in a very methodical fashion. Again, I cannot stress hard enough to read this forum post because it is so good. So here's the deal. I have a couple of things I bought off Amazon. So we have the aquarium co-op strips. We have these JNW. They were, I think, the cheapest strips on Amazon. The Aquion. And finally, Tetras. Uh, now, I've decided in that some of my testing I'm doing down here, I'm going to use multiple different types of tests for testing GH and nitrate and nit all that kind of stuff, right? But I wanted to go a little more in depth on the ammonia. And here's the deal. What I found is that you'll notice very similar charts when you look at the back of these. See that? Same strip. Or at least most likely come from the exact same manufacturer. And when I got my ammonium levels very high, to where a liquid test kit would read them as six plus, these failed to read. Granted, that's using ammonium chloride. So what's probably being, it's what these strips are probably trying to read is the free ammonia, NH3, and they're not reading total ammonia, which includes the NH4 plus. So what's happening, and you can see these results, as I did some experiments and I did a few water changes and got my aquarium dialed down to four parts per million, roughly speaking, ammonia, total ammonia, using an API liquid master test kit. Here's the test right here. And then I tested all of the strips in my care. So all four of these strips to compare. And what you will notice is that the aquarium co-op, the JNW and the Aquion, who all are basically the same type of strip, don't seem to read it quite as accurately as the Tetra and the API liquid kit, which would lead us to understand that they're probably only testing NH3, free ammonia. And that 
by adding ammonium chloride isn't necessarily giving a perfect understanding of just NH3 when we're testing with a total or a tan test kit like the API. Now, there's some digital readers out there. I kind of did this a little fast. We could probably do this way more in depth. And if you're interested in that, be on that thread, which I think that thread is phenomenal. Let me know in the comments down below, okay? So what's the point? Can you trust these, etc.? I think it's important to understand what they are reading. And as we know, higher and lower pH affects the safe and or dangerous levels of NH3 versus NH4+. So the higher your pH, the more that NH3 is going to be present, and the lower your pH, the more ammonium or NH4 plus is going to be present. So where does this matter? If you are in a lower pH tank and you are using one of those test strips that only reads NH3, you could be tricking yourself by not reading the NH4, and that's where you would be better off looking at the Tetra strip, which tests total available, right? The total ammonia, or the API Liquid Master Kit, as opposed to using those other strips. To conclude some of this extra data, I did a big 50% water change after getting it to four parts per million. Did not add <laughs> dechlorinator because that will bind the ammonia. Refilled and then did some more testing. Here are those results. You're gonna notice that it takes us to roughly that two range in parts per million on the API kit. And the Tetra kit also reads it roughly similar, but the aquarium co-op kit does note that you're at a dangerous level but is it as accurate? And that's just a matter of the gauging that they use for display. And they are a little hard to read, but they look like they're showing about one-ish part per million ammonia. This is where the other two fell down hard. The Aquion and the JNW, either one look like they show nothing reading whatsoever, or two, they're barely, barely, barely showing closer to like 0.5 on their kit. And that's just exceptionally potentially dangerous if we're in a environment where NH4 plus is more prevalent and we're only reading free ammonia NH3 we might not know that we have dangerous levels of NH4 plus present in the aquarium and could kill our fish and it does not take much once you start getting over one part per million your fish can die within 24 hours potentially depends on how sensitive the fish are but it is very dangerous now, as we get to those higher pH levels where NH3 is more prevalent, that's where some of these testing strips are more effective and useful. So if you are in naturally hard water that gives you a harder pH, maybe you're 7.6, 7.8, 8.0, higher than that, you live in like literally liquid rock, then that's where something like all of these are going to be your friend because the NH3 is more present and these directly read NH3. And at those higher pHs, NH4 plus is less present and also a little less scary. These become your friend. So in the end, are, they, are these gonna like murder your fish? Are they completely untrustworthy? No, but if you do use them in the wrong scenario, they can give you effectively speaking a false reading. Now, there's one other thing. Some of these strips, depending on the type of ammonia available, NH3 versus NH4, you can have very high concentrations of NH4+, plus, like off the charts levels. And sometimes all three of these strips, the NH3 reading strips, show nothing. They basically don't read. They might show a small amount like 0.5 or 1 or whatever the lowest numbers are on their chart, but they're not giving you an accurate representation. Now, what should be noted? The tank I'm testing on right now, its current pH is sitting at about 6.2. That means that these aren't going to read quite as well, right? However, they should still read some. So it's, it's worth noting that because the pH is naturally low in this tank, having some of those numbers be slightly off makes a little bit of sense. Still, it's one of those things where if you were reliant on these, you would see, oh, there's not that much in there. I just need a simple water change. When maybe what's happening is the NH4 plus is in a high enough concentration that it's very dangerous. And you're doing a smaller water change, not realizing 
You need to do something more drastic than that. That's where it's important to understand your water parameters and then choose the test that works right for you. Soft water, aquarium co-op strips can be just fine. So can these J&Ws, these Aquions, or basically any of the ones that have a similar chart on the side. You look at the chart and the colors, that should tell you roughly the type of test they are. Most of these are made by the same manufacturer anyway, so just choose the one you want to support or whatever's cheapest, whichever your personal flavor is. But if you are on a tank that is maybe lower on pH, like this one, and you want to strip, because you don't want to waste all the time of a liquid test kit, look for something like the Tetra, because this is reading total ammonia nitrate, at TAN, right? It's including NH4+, and it's more accurately reading a potential danger in the water. But if you want to be most accurate, there's two options. There are a strip made by a company called Hach, H-A-C-H. They do lots of high-grade testing materials. They're very, 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 very accurate. Um, I purposely didn't use them in this test because they wouldn't get to me in time, and the person who wrote the article on the Aquarium Co-op forums used them specifically. So I want you to look at the results there for that particular testing strip. Or use a liquid testing kit like the API Master Kit. That's it. I just wanted to briefly talk about ammonia testing because I've been doing an experiment in a tank here. I ran into a personal problem. I did some research and I went, oh yeah, we've been talking a lot about product quality. Let's talk about not necessarily product quality, but ways that we could trick ourselves into thinking that the thing we're using is the right tool for the job. And what's important is for us hobbyists to be as informed as possible so that when we are using something like a test or a medication or a product, we are using the right tool for the job. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you learned something new, let me know in the comments down below. Please, 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 please check out that link to the Aquarium Co-op Forum. Read that article because it's really well done by one of the members over there. Uh, it's, it's all kind of independent testing, absolutely phenomenal work, and I think it should be uh, given a little bit of love. If you've enjoyed this video, thumbs up, like, all those kind of usual things. If you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. It helps you catch all these videos. Also, is the easiest and free way to help your friendly neighborhood internet crazy person grow their channel and do more insane stuff, like talk about ammonia test strips. <laughs> As always, my friends, thank you so much for watching, and stay awesome. <laughs>